well established just how far Hulk Hogan would go to avoid losing matches. Oh, if boy. Hogan was going to lose either in WWE or WCW, then he would request to be protected as much as possible. Yeah. Oh, to yeah, bro. He, yeah, he, he I, brother, what I need from you is to run into the ring and then I need you to hit me with a, a steel <laughs> bat wrapped in barbed wire and then set the barbed wire on fire and when the ref's not looking you whack me in the head with it brother and then you can pin me <laughs> just the most absurd shit to be protected dog what's good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out the first time the biggest wwe superstars were pinned clean now it depends on how they plan on booking a particular wrestler or a particular star but at some point that person will be pinned clean and usually when they are pinning someone clean or getting pinned clean is to elevate the wrestler that's beating them you know it's to make a potential new star that's why you have these long streaks of wrestlers not getting pinned cleanly or you know wrestlers not losing until the right they figure out the right person to beat them for example gunther whoever beats gunther and pins him clean on the main roster that should catapult them to main event stardom at some point there's no depending on how they book it but in theory whoever pins gunther for that Intercontinental Championship and pins him clean, they should be the next guy up. That should clearly be the next guy up. So we'll see if that does happen. We're, we're going to check out some of these moments where it did happen. Someone getting pinned clean and potentially being the next person up. Uh, appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one. WWE cements a wrestler as one of the top stars in the company, it's traditionally rare to see them lose. If they're going to lose a match, then usually hijinks are involved and mm -hmm. the loss in question won't end up being a clean loss. However, from time to time, WWE likes to put over a wrestler in a huge way and that top guy will suffer a rare and clean loss. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the first time the biggest stars in WWE were defeated clean. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. The Big Show a WWE signing Paul White aka Big Show in early 1999 was a huge deal for WWE. Big Show had an incredibly successful run in WCW and now WWE had one of WCW's top stars on their roster. Mm -hmm. Big Show's initial presentation was solid as he looked to be cemented as an instant main eventer in a feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Big Show's first loss came relatively quickly as he would lose to Austin on Raw just a few short weeks into his WWE run. But thankfully, they would crazy. protect Big Show in the loss as Austin required the assistance of a chair. Damn. Big Show's first actual <laughs> clean pinfall loss came at a live event against The Undertaker in the summer of 1999. In relation to his first clean pinfall loss on WWE TV or pay-per-view, then technically it would be at the Rebellion pay-per-view in 1999. Big Show was wrestling Kane in an ODQ match and he introduced a chair into the match. Kane would kick the chair into Big Show's face and proceeded to body slam the seven footer <laughs> for the victory. Randy Orton Randy Orton surprisingly wasn't given the push of a lifetime upon his WWE debut in 2002 uh -oh. and it didn't take long for the young star to lose clean. In May of 2002, Orton would lose clean on SmackDown in a featured match against Test. It was only in 2003 yep. when Orton joined Evolution when WWE would start to protect him in matches. Yep. Nevertheless, Orton has never had an issue with putting over talent in a clean and convincing manner, and Orton has a reputation, especially in recent years, of being completely selfless. Yeah. Edge a WWE Hall of Famer Edge suffered his first notable loss at the breakdown pay-per-view in a match against Owen Hart. However, this was the infamous match which saw Christian debut and distract Edge, so this couldn't be considered as a completely clean pinfall loss. Yeah. Edge's first pinfall loss came in early 99 when Triple H randomly defeated him on Raw with a pedigree, <laughs> Batista. Just when it randomly. comes to the animal Batista, during his decon Batista days, WWE tried to protect him as much as humanly possible, and he seemed to never lose clean. 
When he joined forces with Triple H and Ric Flair, live reports indicate that Batista and the game lost a number of live event matches against Rob Van Dam and Scott Steiner. Uh. However, footage of these matches doesn't exist and fan reports are very limited. It's yeah, back then, the, the live show events, they, you didn't really see too much footage of it that much. You see more of it now. You'll definitely see more of it now, but back then, the live show footage, you didn't really see, so... There could that could be true where they did lose more on the live shows probably, but either the people that remember it, maybe, you know what I'm saying, haven't came out and said anything about it, or you don't really see footage of it that much, so it's often claimed that Batista lost clean for the first time in late 2003 when he was pinned by the legendary Shawn yep. Michaels at the Armageddon pay-per-view. Interestingly, this doesn't count as a clean win as subsequent replays highlighted that Batista's shoulders were off the mat and the referee mm. shouldn't have counted 1-2-3. Batista's first truly clean loss came in February 2004 when Batista lost to Chris Benoit on Raw. Batista tapped out to the crossface and it was presented as a significant moment that Benoit had made the animal tap out. Kane. Yeah, that's and that's that's a that's a crazy moment because they were really pushing batista as the next guy so for him to tap out that way <laughs> that, that that they it lets you know what they were trying to do with crispin Watt as well to elevate him as well so for the first few months of kane's run as the demonic character in wwe he was given win after win yeah his first major pinfall loss was against his own brother the mm -hmm. undertaker Kane would finally be handed a clean loss when he faced the dead men at WrestleMania 14 in arguably one of the best matches of Kane's career. Even though he lost clean in the aforementioned match, WWE went the extra mile to protect Kane mm -hmm. as it took multiple tombstones to put yep. Kane away for good. I think it was like three tombstones. It took like three tombstones to put him away. And he still was able to walk away afterwards. So it's still, yes, he lost, but he still looked like this dude is a monster. It took everything for the undertaker to beat him taker would even hook the leg of his brother to stop him kicking out as opposed to using his traditional tombstone pin combo mm -hmm. Shawn michaels even though Shawn michaels lost clean a number of times as part of the rockers his first documented clean loss in a singles match came in 1988 during the king of the ring tournament in a match against ron bass while losing to Bass is a rather underwhelming first major loss for <laughs> HBK, this loss luckily wouldn't be televised as a King of the Ring event didn't become a pay-per-view fixture until the early 90s. Bobby Lashley. Mm. Upon arriving on the main roster in 2005, it was apparent that- Bro, when you got someone trying to choke you out and you're doing push-ups as they're trying to choke you out, that should let you know you shouldn't be in the ring with them. <laughs> Bobby Lashley would be a main event star. WWE would protect Lashley throughout 2006 and into 2007, mm -hmm. and most of his losses came due to outside interference mm -hmm. and cheating. Lashley would infamously lose to Vince McMahon in an ODQ match, but this featured interference yeah. from Umaga. Yeah. A similar circumstance happened at Backlash when Lashley was defeated by Umaga, Vince McMahon, and Shane McMahon in a three-on-one handicap match. Yeah, bro. It, 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 the odds was against this nigga. You got Vince with the do-rag on. You got Umaga and Shane with the shenanigans. That what is he to do? <laughs> so in theory, this was a clean loss as neither Umaga or McMahon's cheated to win. Lashley would also be pinned a few weeks I mean, later. they didn't cheat to win, but it's a three-on-one. Yes, it's a clean loss because the stipulation is a three-on-one, but it's a three-on-one. Like, it's one of those, like, yeah, he lost, but he should lose. It's three-on-one. <laughs> By Shane McMahon of old people. Lashley would team with John Cena to take on Umaga, the great Kali, and Shane, and Lashley was legitimately defeated clean thanks to a Shane McMahon top rope elbow. Rey Mysterio. That's crazy. It took some time for WWE to realize that Rey Mysterio could be a top guy in the company. Mm -hmm. So from his 2002 debut to around 2005, he unfortunately lost a lot of matches in a clean manner. Mysterio's first clean loss in WWE came at the hands of Jesus. a fellow legend as Mysterio collided with Kurt Angle at the 2002 SummerSlam event. The match in question is arguably one of the greatest pay-per-view openers of all time, and Angle got the win by making Mysterio tap out to the ankle lock. Damn. Seth Rollins. Now, Seth Rollins had a... I mean, it's Kurt Angle, so... I get it. It's Kurt Angle. <laughs> it's, it's understandable if you tap out to the legend himself, Kurt Angle. Rough summer in 2013. Rollins suffered his first clean pinfall loss on the main roster in a match against Daniel Bryan. 
This was the mm -hmm. match which saw Roman Reigns attempt to interfere to help Rollins only for Randy Orton to stop the interference. Rollins also tapped out to Bryan in a six-man tag match, giving mm -hmm. The Shield their first ever clean loss on television. Chris Jericho It's a common misconception that Chris Jericho was pushed to the moon when he signed for WWE in 99. Jericho, mainly due to being a former WCW star, had to work his way up the card, which thankfully Jericho eventually managed to do. His first clean loss in the company would come at the hands of his future arch-rival The Rock. The two would collide at a live event at Madison Square Garden and The Rock secured the clean pinfall win. In terms of clean losses seen on TV or pay-per-view, Jericho's first 100% clean loss came at WrestleMania 16. Jericho took on Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit in a two-fall triple threat match for the Intercontinental and European titles. In the first fall, Benoit performed a trademark Jeez. diving headbutt on Jericho for the clean win and to secure the Intercontinental title. Goldberg when WWE finally signed Goldberg in 2003, for a couple of months, they Woo! presented him as an invincible... See, that's when they weren't doing the, the barricade spot that much. Like, it was fresh. So when he speared that guy through that barricade, oh my god, that was cool. Obviously, now they do it all the time, so it doesn't have the same effect. But back then, oh, that shit was... This thing, I was like, yo, this thing Goldberg is something different, and I'm here for it. Well, figure, Goldberg defeated top stars such as The Rock, Chris Jericho, and Triple H cleanly, and for a while, it looked like Goldberg was going to go on a substantial win streak that was similar to his run in WCW. Fans like to claim that Goldberg's first clean loss either came during the SummerSlam 2003 Elimination Chamber or during his feud with Evolution when Goldberg took on Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton in a handicap match on Raw. In terms of the SummerSlam match, Goldberg was heavily protected in the match. Yeah, he was. Triple H needed help from a trusted sledgehammer. Yeah. In relation to the handicap match, Goldberg was unable to overcome the stacked odds and Triple H pinned Goldberg for the 1-2-3. However, despite the match being a handicap match, this wasn't a clean loss as Ric Flair interfered during mm -hmm. the match just as it looked like Goldberg was going to take the W. Goldberg's first clean loss in WWE actually came in 2017 when he was defeated by Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. Yeah, when you really think about it, yeah, that that definitely makes sense. He was defeated clean. That's right. During Goldberg's initial run in WWE, he wasn't pinned clean once. Every single time there were some sort of shenanigans going mm -hmm. on to protect him in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Kurt Angle. Even though Kurt Angle's win streak was it just sucked because the outcome, it, it shouldn't have been that way. I think they should have, as soon as he got there, I honestly think he should have won that Elimination Chamber, bro. He should have won that. He should have won it. He should have. And then you could have did whatever you wanted to do with that, how you approach that. But he definitely should have won that Elimination Chamber. It wasn't the longest. It was presented as a big deal on WWE television. Therefore, when Angle eventually lost clean, it was a noteworthy moment within the realms of the Attitude Era. Angle would lose his streak to Taz at the 2000 Royal Rumble in one of the most iconic debut matches imaginable. Mm -hmm. Taz would choke out Angle in a matter of minutes, <laughs> and it was the perfect debut yep. for Taz, and it helped enhance Angle's villainous persona. Mm -hmm. This didn't mark the end of Angle's push, as it was signaled that WWE were planning on moving Angle up the card, as in the subsequent months, Angle would capture the European and Intercontinental title, and before the year was out, he would be the reigning WWE champion, yeah. Ronda Rousey. When Ronda Rousey debuted in WWE in 2018, she was given a huge spotlight. Rousey, due to her success in UFC, was presented as an absolute megastar, and yeah. Rousey went on a lengthy, unbeaten streak. She would defeat virtually every top star in the women's mm -hmm. division, from Sasha Banks and Bayley to Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. Her first clean loss would come in 2019 in the main event of WrestleMania 35. Rousey would be pinned by Becky Lynch. Which it should have just been Becky and Ronda, but... I'm gonna leave that alone. Charlotte was inserted. Shouldn't have been, but whatever. Going Lynch to win both the Raw and SmackDown women's titles. Asuka. When Asuka was called up to the main roster following her successful run in NXT, her strong presentation continued, and yeah. Asuka walked into WrestleMania 34 without being pinned or submitted a single time during a WWE <sighs> run. However, shockingly, she lost to Charlotte Flair as she submitted to the figure eight. Not only did she lose, she tapped and then she uh, look at this you see this image why you got her holding her hand up 
that's still one of the biggest blunders WWE has ever done. Asuka should not have lost. She should not have tapped. And she shouldn't have been in this situation to be holding up Charlotte's hand. You could have had Charlotte get her get back at some point. But come on, bro. Ah. <laughs> Ending a streak at 914 days. That's this annoying. booking decision received widespread criticism as a majority of fans questioned if Flair needed to receive this huge honor. She didn't. Flair is Flair. You give that to somebody else that can be elevated from that. It's Flair. We know who she is. She's already solidified. She didn't need this when I stand on that, I will always stand on that. She didn't need this win. It was a common consensus that Asuka shouldn't have lost. Facts. The Ultimate Warrior. Jesus. The Ultimate Warrior was given one of the strongest pushes imaginable. Warrior was booked like he was completely invincible, and it seemed like for the longest time that the WWE had no plans for Warrior to lose to anyone, no matter their star power. However, at a rare house show match between Warrior and Andre the Giant, Andre pinned him clean. Uh. It was rumored that Andre got completely sick of Warrior being stiff and decided to legitimately sit on Warrior to end the match. <laughs> the, of the match is limited, but low quality footage does thankfully exist. In relation to TV matches, if Warrior- <laughs> Hey man, I'm tired of you being stiff. I'm gonna just sit on you. You can't get up now. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> if was ever booked to lose on TV or pay-per-view, he would be heavily protected. Mm -hmm. The finish 99% of the time wouldn't be clean. John Cena. Mm. When it comes to John Cena, he lost clean on several occasions before he became the top guy in WWE. Yeah. But when Cena became the face of the company, clean losses were few and far between. Super Cena rare. ascended to the top of WWE at WrestleMania 21, and the first time that Cena would lose clean following the event was in October of 2005. Cena would team with Shawn Michaels in the Big Show to take on Kurt Angle, Carlito, and Edge. Cena would suffer a rare pinfall loss as Angle countered Cena's own attempt at an ankle mm -hmm. lock into a pinning combination for the yep. win. This helped take the feud between the two to the next level. And if anyone was going to defeat Cena clean, then someone as legitimately credible as Angle receiving the honor was the right call. Mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar. Now, Brock Lesnar had an unprecedented Jesus. rookie year in 2002. He won the King of the Ring and defeated The Rock in the main event of SummerSlam to become the WWE Champion. Lesnar was labeled as the next big thing, and although Lesnar would eventually drop the title to Big Show at Survivor Series, this wouldn't be a clean loss for nope. Lesnar. This was the infamous match in which Paul Heyman turned on Lesnar and allowed the Big Show to get the win and capture the WWE title. Lesnar's first genuine clean loss came in 2003, and it came at the hands of the aforementioned Big Show. Big Show teamed with Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Huss to take on Lesnar in a handicap Falls Count Anywhere match, and Big Show got the win when he choke slammed Lesnar through Jesus. the announce table. Due to the match being a no DQ Falls Count Anywhere matchup, this counted as a completely clean loss for Lesnar. Yeah. Roman Reigns. And once again, I, I put clean with asterisks because of the stipulation, and it's not a one on one clean match. It's a multiple three on one handicap fall, falls count anywhere anything goes match so it's like it's clean in the confines of the match stipulations but it's not really clean when you really think about it because it's three on one so but during his time in the shield roman reigns suffered his first clean pinfall loss on the main roster when his cousin jay uso pinned him the pin and it's come full circle that's what makes that so even that's extra long-term booking. He lost. He first pin to Jay many years later since he's been the universal champion or whatever. His first pin since then was Jay. That's that's poetic. You couldn't write that any better. <laughs> Falling question occurred in an 11-on-3 handicap match on Raw in September 2013. <laughs> That's true. Fast forward Reigns acclaimed run as a tribal chief yep. and the first person to pin Reigns in a number of years was once again Jey Jay. Uso. Yep. In the main event of the Money in the Bank event, Jey Uso pinned Reigns in a tag match. Jey Uso seems to be a thorn in Reigns' side and some would state that Jey is Reigns' biggest rival. The Undertaker. Potentially, yeah. Defeating The Undertaker clean is only an honor that's been bestowed upon a select few wrestlers in WWE. Mm -hmm. The first time The Undertaker lost in a clean manner was against The Ultimate Warrior, but this was a body bad match, meaning that the dead man wasn't pinned. 
the Warrior <laughs> video game pinned recreation. the dead man clean at a live event in the summer of 91, but footage and live reports of the aforementioned loss is very hard to come by. Some fans like to claim that Hulk Hogan recapturing the WWE title from the dead man at Tuesday in Texas counts as a clean win, but the match featured interference and Hogan used the contents of the urn to blind the dead man in the match. Mm -hmm. The dead man would surprisingly lose clean to Macho Man Randy Savage during a number of house shows in 91, and it was believed at the time that Savage was a last minute replacement for the Ultimate Warrior. While Savage was the first confirmed person to defeat the dead man clean, footage of these matches is hard to find, which Hell. is disappointing as the match is a certified dream match. The dead man would go on to lose clean to a number of wrestlers over the years, including Ooh. the likes of Stone Cold, Triple H, Brock Lesnar, and even Vladimir Kozlov. Yeah. Stone Cold Steve that Austin. Happened. <laughs> when Stone Cold Steve thing. Austin signed for WWE, he was initially portraying a character known as the Ringmaster. Austin's first feud as the character was with Savio Vega. Vega was also responsible for handling Austin his first clean loss in WWE wow. as Vega, who was portraying the Caribbean kid persona, defeated Austin with a small package on Superstars in April of 1996. Triple H Upon taking on the gimmick of the Blue Blood Hunter Hearst Helmsley, it did take long for the future WWE executive to lose in a clean manner. Mm -hmm. At the In Your House 3 event, the game lost to Fatu aka Rikishi in a dark match. In terms of TV losses, the game lost for the first time in a clean capacity in a featured match against Bret Hart. The match took place during the road to WrestleMania 12 and it saw the game tap out to the devastating sharpshooter. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> it's well established just how far Hulk Hogan would go to avoid losing matches. Oh, if Hogan was going to lose either in WWE or WCW, then he would request to be protected as much as possible. <sighs> oh, yeah, bro. He, yeah, he, I, brother, what I need from you is to run into the ring and then I need you to hit me with a, a steel <laughs> bat wrapped in barbed wire and then set the barbed wire on fire and when the ref's not looking you whack me in the head with it brother and then you can pin me just the most absurd shit to be protected dog i need you to bring in a real gun brother and shoot me in the leg when the ref is not paying attention that nigga did not want to lose clean during the peak of Hulkamania in WWE, Hogan was presented so insanely strong that he wasn't pinned clean for a six-year period that started in 1984 bro. and lasted all the way until April of 1990. Hogan's first genuine pinfall loss came at WrestleMania 6 when Hogan was pinned by the Ultimate Warrior in the main event. Even this clean loss is questionable as Hogan simply couldn't resist kicking out at the last possible yeah, moment. Yeah, he kicked out at Warriors the last... I mean, the last possible moment, he had to kick out just a bit, but it wasn't in enough time. That's, it's fucking Hulk, bro. Hulk Hogan. Hogan. It looked like a complete fluke. This was combined yeah. with Hogan basically no-selling Warrior Splash, which naturally made fans question the credibility and legitimacy of Warrior's win. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting that this type of strong booking would be hard for WWE to pull off today. Due to them producing hours upon hours of content on a weekly basis, the top baby faces have to stay somewhat vulnerable and presenting them as completely untouchable will just turn the crowd against them. But there you have it folks, the first time the biggest- Oh man, that boy Hulk Hogan. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, you, you, nope, you're not beating me. You're going to legit have to shoot me <laughs> before I ever get pinned clean. <laughs> Comment down below. Let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out. I appreciate all the love and support you guys show on the channel. Road to 150k. I'm still getting speed of YouTube as a channel, bro. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. <laughs> See y'all next week.